triple. Eddie Bowles at Central Park Lanes in East Boston. Ed Bowles a 680 to earn a number two seed in the TV roll-off, and he'll be taking on the man who gained the number one seed with a 686 score, Gary Santora from Auburn, Massachusetts. Gary Santora back again this season, 127 average. High single, 193. His high triple is 466. Gary Bowles in a couple of different bowling centers in the Metro West Worcester area, Colonial Lanes in Worcester, and Thunderbird Lanes in Auburn. It should be a terrific match. Ed Woodside and Gary Santora, let's get right to it. A champion will emerge when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll be back right after this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire. All right, we're ready to go as we look at our five bowlers who began this latter series. Tim Lipke defeated David DiOrio and Rich Hallberg before Ed Woodside down Tim Lipke, setting up this afternoon's match with Lipke and Santora. A check it with Woodside and Santora, and Woodside is first to bowl at Lita Lanes. Missed the spear to start out. 395 for Ed Woodside over Tim Lipke last week. Uh, Lipke in a three-week run finally fell victim to Ed Woodside. Ed Woodside bowls out of Central Park Lanes in East Boston. Bowls in the Friday Night Pro League. He's been bowling for 30 years. A high single of 184, a high triple of 446. A 680 roll-off score. And the... Four horsemen on the right side, the one, the three, the six, and the ten. And a shot at it and makes the spare. Nice spare for Ed Woodside in the second frame. And we get our first look of the series at Gary Santora, certainly no stranger to viewers of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Gary, a very smooth and stylish bowler from Auburn, Massachusetts, bowling out of the Colonial Lanes in Worcester and T-Bird Lanes in Auburn. And he will start out with a spare. Gary averages 127, a high single of 193, a high triple of 466, and you look at the spare one more time. 686 was his roll-off score. Earning him the top seed, and that's a pocket shot, and not much to show for it. Terrible lead before seven, nine, and ten on what appeared to be a sweeping head pin hit. Gary's been on TV 50 11 times. He was on the old Channel 5 show once. Last time on, Candlepin Stars and Strikes is the number four seed in the Tournament of Champions. This past April, lost to Scott Creighton in a two-frame roll-off 29-26 after they tied at 349 for the triple. He's been in the Tournament of Champions the last couple of years. I think he told us before we went on today that of uh, his last five times here in the qualifying rounds, he's been the top seed three times. So it's a position that he likes. I think some bowlers would rather work their way up from a little lower down. But he likes sitting there at the top. One match, that's all. Ed Woodside just puts four in the spare. Nice shot. Played the wood perfectly to take the 10. Oh, he had an inverted triangle, and that's the way to play it. Watch it again. That's playing the wood, forgetting the pins and going after the wood and letting the dead wood take care of the three pins standing. Ed Woodside's a sales associate at Macy's in downtown Boston. Right at Downtown Crossing. He and Denise have been married for 14 years, and their children are Michael, 11, and Lauren, 8. And this is the third time he's been on television. His brother Kevin, of course, has made our program a couple of times. That'll be a nine box, I think. That wood will not come back to take out that last standing pin. Ed gave it an opportunity, and it wouldn't bite. 
43 through four for Ed Woodside. Gary Santoro right on the head pin, a spare opportunity for Gary. The four pin is the only pin still standing. Of course, $1,000 for a winner today and a spot in the Tournament of Champions coming up next spring. $500 to today's runner-up. Second mark of the first string for Gary Santoro. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV is a presentation of the Thompson family of dealerships. McMulkin Chevrolet and Nashua Hyundai, and Nashua Mitsubishi, and Nashua Daewoo, all located in the New England Automotive Village on the Daniel Webster Highway in Nashua, New Hampshire. Ten bucks for Gary Santora. And an early seven pin lead for Santoro over Ed Woodside. Will they all go? Watch that five pin. It wobbles. Not gonna go. Surrounded by wood, it still wobbles. Do you recommend to use the wood on the shot? Spare for Woodside. Second mark, first string for Ed. I want to mention we, uh, of course, originate here at Lita Lane's, uh, home of Kegler's Den. Why not on any Sunday afternoon following the show, come on down and watch up to five NFL games at once right after Candlepin Stars and Strikes. They've got all the satellites hooked up. You're invited to watch as much football as you can take Sunday. Of course, the playoffs starting in a couple of weeks for the Super Bowl. So more football action for about the next six weeks. You can watch it here at Kegler's Den at Lita Lane's. Bounces that one down. Look at that shot by Ed Woodside. He bounced it down and took it out. Let's take a look at it one more time. The ball took the pin. Gary Santora now. Missing the head pin. Not by much. The one, two, seven, nine, ten, and there's no wood on that. Very, very difficult shot. Look at that shot by Gary Santora. He made it look easy, didn't he? That's the third mark of the first string for Gary. Perfectly thrown ball nice. and got the pin off the side wall. On the spare, the spread eagle. Right through the middle, he threw it right down the center of the lane. We've seen this shot maybe once in the last three years, made. Takes the three on the right. It's about a one in a hundred shot, maybe. And now the three on the left. Well done by Gary Santora to get the 10 box. Very methodical. Now Ed Woodside looks for some bonus money. He had a shot at the triple strike jackpot at the end of the match last week. In the 10th frame threw a couple of strikes and then an eight. 775 is what we have in the jackpot this week. It really is amazing to think how good these bowlers are that the triple strike jackpot is hit maybe once or twice a year and that's it. Out of hundreds of games bowled. A lot of guys get to two, but that third one proves to be the tough one. That will be a nine box for Ed Woodside. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago we had a letter from a, a viewer who had the occasion Go candle pin and duck pin within close proximity. Candle pins at Brunswick and Burlington, and then duck pins at Collins, Boulder Drome, and Bill Rickup. Right. Recently met some people that uh, bowl in a league at the Collins Boulder Drome. In Bill Ricca. That's a spare for Ed Woodside. This letter is from Edith and Alan Jenkins of Bill Ricca, Massachusetts. Right, that they enjoy the show and have watched Candlepin Bowling since the Jim Britt, Don Gillis days. Lunch at noon in front of the TV. How well we remember that. 
This is the seven, the eight, and the ten in the back row for Gary Santora. And a piece of wood slowly sliding in between the eight and the ten, and a piece of wood out in front of the ten at a bit of an angle. And I think the back pin is about to fall off. Yep, there it goes. Play the wood on the right and hold your breath. No, he threw it into the gutter. I don't think. Yep. That's uh, one that'll come off. And that'll be a seven box. For Gary Santora. Mrs. Jenkins writes that uh, she believes they have a unique situation in Bill Ricca. One day a week, a group of seniors bowl candle pins, and another day they bowl ducks. It's for fun and exercise, and there's no pressure, and they just do their best and have a good time. The difference in each game don't really matter. It's still bowling, and they enjoy it all. So it's the same group that bowls Apparently in two that's different the case. That's, that's They've great. met many friends, and they look forward to bowl each week. They bowl year-round. And they used to bowl ten pins way back when. And she also writes, and I'll read this one in a second here, Gary Santora with a ten box. Here's the, the kicker, the, the last paragraph, Michael. We'd like to see a live TV match between you two. How about out? How about it? We enjoy your commentaries. Let's talk more action. Well, what do you think? Well, have your people talk to my people. We could set it up for the right price. So you think it's got pay-per-view written all over it? Nice shot by Ed Woodside. Two marks in a row for Ed. He'll look for some bonus money here. Well, you know, there's the XFL coming on here in a few months. Vince McMahon Football League. How about extreme candlepin bowling? No, there goes the five pin. We've got a bonus money opportunity here for Ed Woodside. Put nine in the spare. And this is a $50 shot. A lot of wood surrounding that 10 pin. At least four or five pieces of wood. There's no way he can miss this. Well, he took the spare. $50 in bonus money for Ed Woodside. That's his sixth mark of the first string. He's at 132 plus a ball. get nine one more is gonna go there it goes well watch out hold on nope not gonna get it the other way it'll be a nine and a 141 first string for Ed Woodside <laughs> terrific first string for Ed now Gary Santoro will have to respond much better start than last week when he had 116 in first string and Gary off the head pin there Leaves the one, the three, the seven, and the eight. Not going to make the spare. Well, he's staring at about a 30-pin deficit without a mark in the 10th frame. He's at 101 through nine. Good pocket shot for Gary right there and a real good spare opportunity. The four pin with a piece of wood. Those are the kind you like. Mike Morin makes this shot six out of ten times. You haven't done anything wacky on your radio show lately, have you? Uh, not since the uh, the announcement of the tall ships coming to Lowell, but uh, you never know what could be happening tomorrow morning. Mike Morin, Morin in the morning on WHOB 106.3. The nine pin fill in the spare for Gary Santora gives him a first string total of 120. A 21 pin lead for Ed Woodside as we head to string number two of the championship match of this third ladder series. On Candlepin Stars and Strikes, we're coming back to Lita Lanes right after this on WNDS TV.
Gary Santoro will be first to bowl in the second string of our three string championship match. He trails Ed Woodside by 21 pins. The winner of this match advances to the Tournament of Champions at the end of our season. Next week, by the way, a little bit of a hiatus from the latter series as we begin a full week run of mixed doubles competition. And I know who our first sets are. Next week, we are going to see the teams of Steve Plant and Cynthia Cawley take on a man we saw last week, Tim Lipke, and his partner, Colleen Montplacier. Hope I'm saying her name correctly. Ten box for Gary Santora to start out. The doubles qualifying was done uh, a little quicker cycle than, than as usual, so we're able to tell you who the, uh, the boulders are next week. It's Gary Santora, real good solid pocket shot, and the six pin still standing with some wood. Spare for Santora in the second frame. Nice note from Tim Gregerson, who writes frequently. A real devoted fan of Candlepin Bowling. This is a couple of his favorite bowlers here. Uh, let me guess. Tom Morgan, Tom Morgan, and Tom Morgan. And Mike Morgan. <laughs> and Mike Morgan. <laughs> Look at that shot. Will it go? Beautiful. The seven pin shakes. He almost made a great shot. How do you think that the, the rolling pin made contact? Why wouldn't it go over? And that'll be a nine box. Aside from the Morgans, Tim Gregerson likes Joe Tavernes, Gary Carrington, Jeff Atkins, Greg Holbrook, Dick O'Connell, Dave Richards, and Don Richmond, to name a few. What's not to like? All great champions, that's for sure. And we've seen most of them on our show. Dick O'Connell, I don't think, has made an appearance since we've taken the show over. But all the other guys have. And, of course, there's the new generation of bowlers coming up, the Chris Bovers of the world and the Sean Bakers, guys like that that are just tremendous uh, competitors. Not going to make it. Bruno DeFeo, another one of the Bruno young DeFeo, ones. Bruno DeFeo, great young bowler, yeah. yep. And, and, and nice guys. That'll be a nine box for Ed Woodside. They appreciate the game for the heritage that it has and for the bowlers who have come before them to make it all possible. Then you got the guys kind of in the middle of the old and the new. You've got the Gary Centaurs and Ed Woodsides, guys in that uh, particular I, way. I still consider these guys young guys. Well, I suppose from our perspective, they are. Both in their 40s. Well, I am too, I guess, barely. Gary puts seven in the spare. should mention uh, for those of you who've sent us postcards for the bonus ball contest $70 if you can match the ball that our bowler throws on your postcard if we select it following today's match don't forget to send in your postcard to the bonus ball contest care of Lita Lanes 340 Amherst Street Nashua 03063 put your name address and pick a number from 0 to 10 if you think the winning bowler will throw a gutter ball, so be it. I don't think it's going to happen, but is Gary taking a shot? Well, we've had half Worcesters thrown two we in have. the last three weeks. So, uh, so a two is certainly something that yeah, uh, I would consider a two. I think we had somebody win last year on a three, some really bizarre number like that. Eight box for Gary Santora. 44 through four. After every match, our winning bowler bowls a ball, and we draw a postcard out of the bin. And if the numbers match, you win the cash jackpot, which this week, as Mike said, is $70. And if you don't match, we have a nice consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. That's a tough miss by hmm. Ed Woodside, as it looked like he was going to make the shot, but the 10-pin is still standing. Ten box. And it looked like he deserved better from that, too, with a shot that was in the 1-3 pocket. 
Got the two, the four, and the ten. Tough angle shot. Wood on the right will help him a little bit. Well, it's fallen off into the gutter now, the one that was near the ten pin. So he will be open through the first four frames of the second string, and Gary Santoro will inch a little bit closer. That'll be a nine box. He's at 37. Santoro's picked up seven pins, a 14-pin lead in the match as we go to the break with Gary Santoro trailing Ed Woodside. When we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for more of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Gary Santora ready to bowl on lane 34 at Lita Lanes. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. And our entire WNDS TV crew here at Lita Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Happy to have you with us. Thanks for joining us for our regular weekly get together. Week after week, this program remains one of the highest rated shows on WNDS. It's been that way year in and year out. Now I think it's in our 17th year. For Michael and I, it's our fourth year together. Ah. Mm, could have been a double strike for Santora. Five pin last time, a nine pin remains. Absolutely clear pin deck, no dead wood to deal with. Oops. Did he, he just twist himself that time? He's limping a little bit coming back. I don't know if he just uh, ended up in kind of an awkward. No, he's OK. Foot uh, kind of angled at the foul line, which caused him to throw the ball to the left, I think. I think he twisted himself a little bit. Woodside looks to break up the split. A lot of wood on the deck here for Ed. If it stays in position, it will help him, but it's rolling out of the way. Not that great now. Has to play it, though. Right between the two. So the field goal. Seven and the nine remain with Wood in front of each pin. And he'll take the nine. And that was up against a Gary Santora spare with a nine fill in the fifth frame. It's a very so the match is getting a little yep. closer. Very, very snug. Keep in mind, too, while these bowlers are trying to win the match, they're also trying to gain a high score because seeding in the Tournament of Champions is based on the winning score. And that will be a nine box. Nope, he's not. He's got one more to go. And a piece of wood that Looks to be out of play, although it's about to roll into the right channel. So he will be open in the sixth frame. A four pin lead in the match now for Ed Woodside. So things have really tightened up as Gary Santora has eaten away 17 pins of the 21 pin lead that Woodside had after the first string. Gary Carrington, 414, Mike Morgan, 397. Those are the two seedings that we know for sure for next spring's Tournament of Champions. Our third bowler will be added today. And uh, at the rate we're going, it doesn't look as though we will see anybody shoot much above that, if even that close. Although Ed Woodside, off to a great start at 141, is uh, struggling with 56 through 6. So 100 right now is going to be tough. 10 box for Gary. Both these bowlers are very explosive, very capable of high scores. Santori has a high single of 193. Woodside a high single of 184. Spread Eagle with one on each side in the back. Just two pins chopped out that time. And there must be a name for that. When the one and the five go out, I don't know what it is. Look at this. Took out uh, five of the eight pins, leaving the two. Nine and ten with wood nestled around the two pin. Nine box, and he did well to do that. He is at 92 through eight. Now Ed Woodside will try to take advantage of the two open frames that Gary Santora put on the board. Well, 
right in the pocket and a tough shot remains. The five, the six, and the ten. Will it go? It wobbles. There it goes. Watch it again and try to figure out why it went down. Just Great. nudge. Just yeah. a nudge. And there it goes. It wobbled and went down. That's the first mark for Ed Woodside this game, by the way. Right on the head pin. Another tough shot. That's the three, the four, and the six. Either a cut shot or a bank shot. Your only two options here. It's an 11 pin lead in the match for Ed Woodside now with two frames remaining in the second string. Neither bowler lighten it up here in the second string. Last couple of weeks have actually been fairly low scoring. Santoro with another good pocket shot, but a nine pin drop. And he surveys the field right now, looks at the dead wood. He'd like it all to stay away. Now the wood on the right gives him some margin for error if he doesn't cap it. Didn't need it. Looks like we'll have an interesting third string. As it should be for a top prize of $1,000. Now Gary will put eight in the spare. Missing the head pin by a long way, but getting some very favorable pin action. The one and the two are left. Easy spare make here for Gary Santoro. Easy for you to say and easy for Gary to make. Two marks in a row. He's at 120 plus. Strike here would put him at 130 and put $50 in the bank. It'll be a 128 second string for Gary Santora to go with a 120 in the first, a two string total of 248. And unless Ed Woodside marks in one of the final two frames, Santora will take the lead into the third string. Half Worcester for Ed Woodside on the right side. Good second ball. Ninety one with a box to go. Needs a mark to win it all for at least the second game to go ahead in the match overall. He actually can't win the string, but can take the match lead. Needs a mark to do that. A mark and a seven. Here he's got the one, three, and the nine, and some wood that is rolling to the left of the three pins on the deck. Won't be a factor. You want to hit right between the one and the three. Looks good. Nice shot. Beautiful shot. Perfect. So he needs a seven with this ball to take the lead into the third string. A six. We have a tie. Anything above it, the lead goes to Woodside. In any case, it's going to be close. Ed Woodside will have the lead by a couple of pins. As we move to the second string, a 109 second string, and it's a two pin lead for Ed Woodside, 250 to 248. Heading to the third and final string of this championship match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. You're watching WNDS TV. Ed Woodside will lead us off in the third string of a very tight championship match. Two pins separate these two fine bowlers, our top two seeds. Second seeded Ed Woodside bowling right now and top seed Gary Santora vying for a berth in the Tournament of Champions. And there's the spare for Woodside starting out the third string. Wisely deciding to use the wood instead of going straight at the five pin with a great opportunity to cap the wood and then have the ball 
Karam around the left side of the pin, so he did the right thing on that one. That time he grabbed the head pin, puts nine in the spare, and leaves the 10 pin in the corner with no wood to get in the way. Two marks in a row for Ed Woodside to start the third string, putting the pressure on Gary Santora to answer. Gary Santora, the 1996 Massachusetts State men's doubles winner, along with Rob Brakeel, good friend of his. So he's got some championship bowling under his belt for sure, including two appearances in the last couple of years on the Tournament of Champions here at WNDS. The two, four, five, and seven still stand for Gary Santora after his first shot. Nice shot. Well done for Santora as he responds to the first frame mark by Ed Woodside with one of his own. Don't know that we mentioned that uh, Gary Santora is a software engineer for Stratus Computers in Maynard. Actually, it's a, a new position he's recently gotten into. He's kept him very, very busy. And a strike on top of the spare. Gary Santoro will be looking for bonus money when he comes to the line next time as the delayed reaction strike gives him two marks in a row. Ed Woodside is looking for bonus money right now. Spread eagle right through the middle. And if he gets bonus money here, he's really deserved it. He's really earned it. Two on the left. Nine box for Ed Woodside. Missed the head pin, grabbed the second pocket. And a five pin drop. Got the one, two, five, seven, and nine. All but the one. Fifty two through four for Ed Woodside. Well, Gary Santora yet to earn any bonus money today. Here's a chance right here. Fifty dollars for a mark. Broke up the split, has a spare opportunity with the two and the four pins. Still standing, no wood to be seen. And he's doing it against an Ed Woodside open frame. Should be very helpful as well. $50 in bonus money. For Gary Santora, more importantly, three marks in a row to put him in the lead of this match. Moore missed the head pin, put seven in the spare. The one, the two, and the four. Played on the outside, four marks in a row, another $25. For Gary Santora, he opens the third string with four straight marks. When we come back, Santora has the lead. Woodside will be bowling. We continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after this. Side bowling on lane 33 now in the sixth frame of the third string. He had a six box in the fifth frame to put him at 58 through five. Gave it a good run there, but not much to show for it. 
He'll be open again, his fourth straight open box. And Gary Santora has been red hot in the fourth, in the third string with marks in the first four frames, as you see there. He has $75 in bonus money, looking for more and looking to really put the dagger into Ed Wood's side. Look at this. Will they go? Eight pins in the spare. Tough leave here. Wood on the deck. Don't know if it'll be a factor. I think uh, Gary would like to see it angled a little bit differently. Almost. It came in front of the 10 pin. Well, he's still going to be in the mid 80s through five. Takes a big lead on Ed Woodside through the first half of this final string. That'll be a 10 box. He's at 85 for the half. Up against an open frame in the sixth box. This time he punches through a spread eagle. Ed Woodside was happy to see that. Ed needs a couple of marks next time he steps up. $50 in bonus money for Woodside, $75 for Santora. And if Gary wins today, it'll be his third consecutive year in the Tournament of Champions. That's a 10 box for Gary Santora. Nicely done, and he's at 95 through six, and a 26 pin lead in the match for Gary Santora with four frames remaining. Needs a strong finish to get some preferable seating in the tournament so far. Ed Karen Woodside and right on the head pin, a spread eagle. And Carrington and Morgan were both right around 400, were they not? Yeah, 414 for Carrington, 397 for Mike Morgan. That's a tough six box for Ed Woodside. Can't afford many of those. And that's the second one in the last three boxes. Santora needs a 167 to, uh, to take the top seed right now. That's not, well, 95 through six. Runs off three, four more marks. He can certainly do that. Woodside off the head pin there. Has some wood that'll help. The one, the four, the seven, the nine, and the 10. And here they go. The seven pin still stands. The ball will not take it out. Almost came up from the uh, from the gutter, but not quite a 10 box and an 83. And this one slipping away from Ed Woodside. The yeah, only two marks for Woodside, first and second frames, and that's it. A couple of six boxes along the way, not very helpful. Last week he had 395 over Tim Lipke. Here's Gary Santora trying to apply the clincher. The five and the seven with a piece of wood. Nice spare for Gary Santora. And that could just about do it. Mixed doubles next week on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Our first two couples, Steve Plant and Cynthia Cawley, are the fifth seeds. They'll take on fourth seeds, Tim Lipke and Colleen Montplacier. Gary Santora, the five pin is still standing. It dances a little bit, but it's still there. Nine pins in the spare. Gary has filled his marks well in this string. And another spare. That is the sixth mark in eight boxes in the third string for Gary Santora, who has really applied the pressure down the stretch. And he can really start thinking about a 400 plus triple now and possibly top seeding after getting three positions filled in the Tournament of Champions. Of course, that assumes that he does win, and it looks as though he will. Half Worcester, and he followed it right through. Seven marks for Ed Woodside. He is at 90. Match is officially over as far as the winner is concerned.
Will he pick it up? No, he's at 99. Needs this for 100. A 100 third string for Ed Woodside, a three string total of 350. Gary Santoro looks for some more bonus money right here. And a 167 to be top seed at the Tournament of Champions. Spread Eagle right through the middle. That will not help the cause. Chopping wood right now. Seven box for Santora. He's at 135 with a box to go. Needs a mark to slip in between Mike Morgan and Gary and uh, Gary Carrington in the Tournament of Champions seating. Three bowlers down and three to go. Off the head pin. Nice spare for Gary Santora in the 10th frame. He'll need a five fill to go ahead of Mike Morgan in the seating in the Tournament of Champions. Watch and it again. He played it very well. Watch the nine pin fall into the 10. I, uh, I wonder if he's aware of the positioning, how important this ball really is. Well, he threw a pretty good ball, and he gets them all to finish with a 155 and a three string total of 403 for Gary Santoro. That'll give him second seeding at the moment in our Tournament of Champions, and we'll come back to meet our bowlers and look ahead to next week when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire. Gary Santora defeats Ed Woodside. Final score 403 to 350. The advantage of being the top seed. Well, he really loves that position, and uh, this will be, I do believe, his third consecutive year in the Tournament of Champions. And right now, he sits in the number two position out of the three that have been delegated, right behind Gary Carrington. He's got 403 in the second spot ahead of Mike Morgan, who's in third. Let's bring in our runner-up here this afternoon. Standing right next to me is Ed Woodside. Moving a little closer, Ed. Congratulations to you. First of all, a check for $500 for being runner-up. We have uh, $50 in bonus money, and you mentioned to me before we came back on the air that you, you hit a bit of a wall in the third string oh, there. Must be a feeling. I think my ball just flattened out a little, and when uh, Gary started throwing mocks, put the pressure on. So, what do you running. say to yourself when you're in a situation like that? What, well, how do you try to keep yourself back in it? You say slow down and throw a good ball, and then you end up speeding up and throwing a bad ball. So, I know you had a little bit of a cheering section here for uh, rooting for you during the course of the afternoon. Who was here? I had my son Michael, my daughter Lauren, my niece Nicole, which is my brother Kevin's son, a daughter who's been on the show, and my mother and father. So they were here rooting you on, and. Uh, a good time will be had by all, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Ed Woodside, congratulations later, Ed. to go. Ed Woodside. And now our bonus ball contest, Gary Santora. will roll a ball, and we'll try to match him up with a winner. Go ahead, Gary. And it looks like a nine for Gary Santora. And Mike Morin will reach in there. Can you pull out a nine, I Michael? Think the nines are on the bottom, Dick. We see. have, uh, what, $70, is it, in the cash? $70 Jack, is 70 correct. Bucks, and we'll yes. check the card here. And this is Clara Iman from Upton, Massachusetts. Clara picked six. It's not a winner. It's not a match or consolation go, prize <laughs> of uh, from NNR Trophies in Winchester, yeah. Massachusetts. And let's bring Gary Santora in. Congratulations to Gary. We'll reach in here and pull out the winner's check for $1,000 for Gary Santora. $75 in bonus money. And being that top seed certainly has its advantages, doesn't it? Yeah, it's an advantage. Uh, you know, you, you can sit back and watch everybody else, let them fight amongst themselves, and then just come in and see if you can hold on. The start of the third string, you put four marks together. Uh, you knew that put a little pressure on Ed at the time, and it had to put you in a position of feeling pretty good about the rest of the string. Yeah, I felt pretty good then. And I mean, Ed started chopping. How many spread eagles did he have? Four or five? 
Now that, that's tough when you're punching that out. Now this will be your third straight appearance in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the season. Is this the year for Gary Santora? Well, hopefully. I think I'm going to be seated a little higher this time, so maybe that'll help. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you. Congratulations to Gary Santora. We'll see you at the end of the year. Gary, Gary Santora, holiday. our winner of this latter series, and right now seated second in the Tournament of Champions. That's right again. Gary Carrington, and followed by Gary Santora, and then Mike Morgan in third place, and we'll be filling a number of other positions after we take a little break for Mixed Doubles. Mixed Doubles begins next week on Candleton Stars and Strikes, and we know who we'll be seeing. We do. We've got another minute or so, so I've got time to tell you who you'll be seeing. We have the opportunity to let you know. Next week, Colleen Montplacier and Tim Lipke, who you saw a couple weeks ago, will team up against Cynthia Cawley and Steve Plant. Tony Wellspring and Sean Baker in week number two. Uh, Janet Pock, haven't seen her on our show, and we're glad to welcome Janet to Mixed Doubles. She'll uh, team up with Jack Daly out of Quincy, Mass. And sitting in the top seed in the Mixed Doubles, which begin next week, Karen McCormick and Tom Morgan. So we've got some great bowlers, a lot of experience, and a lot of new faces starting next Sunday. And we'll look forward to seeing you as well. And once again, congratulations to Gary Santora, our latter series winner with a 403-350 win over Ed Woodside in the championship match. For Mike Morin and our entire WNDS-TV crew, I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Candleton Stars and Stripes. So long, everybody.